even at supersonic speeds. But it had its shortcomings as well. But it was a very complicated system, and it was heavy. Now, normally only one out of every ten ejection seats manufactured is used in anger. And that means if you have a heavy system in an aeroplane, nine of the aeroplanes are going to be penalised by toting a lot of weight around that they don't need to carry. And that's going to affect performance. It's going to affect, affect the weight, the bomb load or whatever that they can carry. It was also found that in reality, ejections don't normally occur at very high speeds. If something goes wrong with an aeroplane, the first thing it does is slow down, especially if it breaks wing comes off, something like this, the aeroplane slows down very rapidly. And so the number of ejections that have occurred above 600 knots have been very few, very few. It's, it's a fraction of 1%. And therefore, there's no need to develop um, that type of um, technology. So that type of seat went away. In the 1960s, the U.S. Air Force went in another direction in the design of its new escape system for the supersonic F-111 strike fighter. The whole forward cockpit formed a self-enclosed capsule that would be ejected free from the aircraft in an emergency. The F-111 crew module forms a portion of the forward fuselage and is comprised of the pressurized cabin and the stabilization glove. The F-111 capsule was the most complex escape system ever designed and is still in service today. As this test footage shows, it suffered from the same heavy weight penalties as the B-58 capsule. The F-111 system was the last encapsulated ejection system ever fielded. Instead, air forces began to concentrate on improving more conventional ejection seats. Firepower is a risky business. And in the 1960s, it was especially risky at low altitudes. Likewise, ejections at slow speeds, such as immediately after takeoff, were dangerous, since the parachute had little or no time to deploy. What was needed was an ejection system that would save the pilot no matter how low or how slow. These were called zero-zero ejection seats meaning that they functioned at zero altitude and zero speed. The first live ejection with a zero-zero seat was tested by Martin Baker in 1961. Watched by members of the world press and observers from the United States, Dotty Hay pulled the pace line, which resulted in an ejection height of over 300 feet. The critical innovation of the zero-zero seat was the addition of a rocket under the seat. Once the pilot was ejected clear of the aircraft, a rocket engine was ignited, boosting the pilot high enough for the parachute to function properly. This type of seat was especially welcomed by Navy carrier pilots who faced the special risk of engine failure accidents during the catapult launch. To convince Navy pilots of the advantage of the new seats, Martin Baker built a special test rig that was launched off a carrier. Not surprisingly, Martin Baker seats have become a staple ingredient of U.S. Navy aircraft, including the latest, such as the F-18 Hornet. Zero-zero seats, manufactured by such firms as Martin Baker in Britain and McDonnell Douglas and Stencil in the United States, have become the basic ingredient in nearly all escape systems on modern fighter planes. Let's take a look at how the ejection seat works. On entering the aircraft, the pilot buckles in and attaches a series of restraints to the flight suit. On ejection, these harnesses will restrain the pilot's limbs and pull the pilot back to the proper vertical orientation. To operate the ejection system, most contemporary ejection seats use a ring between the pilot's legs or handles in the armrest. Older seats from the 1950s used an over-the-shoulder face blind, but this took precious time 
and was difficult to do if the aircraft was out of control. On pulling the ejection handle, a series of actions rapidly occur. The harnesses at the pilot's shoulders pull him back into the seat. This minimizes the risk of damage to the pilot's spine. The arms and legs are also pulled into the seat to prevent them from hitting parts of the cockpit when the seat is ejected. There are three ways to get the ejection seat through the cockpit canopy. On some aircraft, the canopy is blown off by an explosive charge. On others, explosive cord contained in the canopy itself shatters the plastic. On other seat designs, the ejection seat is powerful enough to smash through the thick plexiglass. After having pulled the ring, it will take only two seconds for the pilot to be ejected clear of the aircraft. Once free of the cockpit, the rocket engine will fire. After this occurs, the critical parachute phase begins. First, a small drogue chute will be released. The drogue chute prevents the seat from tumbling. Once the speed is sufficiently reduced, the seat automatically releases the pilot's harnesses and separates the pilot from the seat. With the seat clear, the main parachute begins to deploy. The modern ejection system is more than just a parachute. In the event of landing in the water, it contains an emergency pack with flotation equipment and survival supplies. Contemporary Russian aircraft are fitted with a modern K-36 ejection seat, which is basically similar to those used in European and American fighters. During the Paris Air Show in 1989, a MiG-29 lost engine power after striking a bird. The aircraft was less than 500 feet from the ground, losing power and heading for the crowd. The pilot managed to steer the nose down and eject literally at the last second. Let's see that again in slow motion. The pilot's parachute barely managed to open fully, yet he walked away from the accident. A real credit to modern ejection seat design. Few ejections are more harrowing than an upside-down ejection, as Marine Captain John Walsh discovered during a Desert Storm combat mission. His Harrier was hit by an Iraqi anti-aircraft missile and went out of control. It's a very violent experience. Um, I was hit during uh, my 39th mission on the second day of the ground war, and uh, I made it south across the lines before I got out, but I was trying to divert into a... Uh, a, a field we'd recently overrun, and I ended up ejecting at 900 feet upside down. But this is the uh, the stencil seat in this aircraft. I think it's the finest in the world. A system in the aircraft knows its attitude, directs the seat so it won't shoot you down into the ground. I went out the side, and uh, we get a shoot immediately. There's actually a ballistic spreader. It's like a an explosive that spreads the canopy open immediately, so you get a shoot right away, and you hang it in the chute as quick as you can blink your eye. When I went out. You, you, we lift our head for proper uh, uh, spinal cord positioning, but I remember seeing a flash, then I remember seeing a flame between my feet as the rocket motor was throwing me out. It felt like a hundred hands were tearing at my flight seat, trying, you know, the wind blast. Then I felt the chute open, and the opening shock was quite severe. It, it really knocks you for a loop. I saw a lot of stars. But uh, next thing I know, I was hanging in the chute about a second and a half later, and uh, I was thinking to myself, well, I'm along for the ride. I hope the seat works, and it, it did and I hit the ground. Luckily, the uh, sand was soft because I hit pretty hard, but I got up and started running south and uh, felt pretty good about that seat. Wanted to go back and get it, but uh, had to leave it out there. Current ejection seats have proven to be remarkably effective, but the increasing performance of modern fighter planes, like the Saab Gripen we see here, is encouraging the development of even more sophisticated ejection seats. Ejection seats are entering the computer age. Microprocessors are being added to the seats to sense the best angle to steer the seat once it clears the stricken aircraft. These new seats undergo rigorous testing on special high-speed rocket-propelled sleds. And the latest ejector seats are actually trying to bang the pilot out. And then actually, regardless of which angle he comes out at, I mean, because the aircraft probably isn't straight and level. 
but it's to actually twist and push him up high enough to stand a chance of survival. Modern ejection seats have added a critical measure of safety to the dangerous business of flying today's warplanes. The success of today's seats give the pilot essential reassurance when the need arises to eject.